Hi, I'm flutist Fumjay Kim. I'm so excited and thrilled to welcome you to our latest Astral Nova online event, an interview with my Astral Micro Commission composer, Sean Opebolo. I'll be premiering Sean's new piece on a painting by Henry Osawa Tanner, The Thankful Poor, on December 5th, live in Philadelphia. Hi, Sean. Thank you so much for joining me over Zoom. It is so great to connect with you again. And how have you been doing? Yeah, well, thanks for having me. Um, yeah, so I, I've been doing great. You know, this pandemic um, uh, has been hard for so many people, especially performing musicians, because things just stopped. Uh, and um, but for, fortunately for me as a composer, I was able to keep writing um, and getting some commissions and in hopes that these pieces will be performed after the pandemic is over. You know, I'm so grateful that uh, things are opening up more and more live concerts are happening, um, you know, and, and um, including the, this uh, um, this performance. You know, I'm an, I'm an extrovert, so the pandemic was my friend. You know, I need people, I need concerts, <laughs> I need energy. Uh, and so I'm glad that things are kind of shaping uh, uh, up where we can, again, perform, go to concerts, see people, go out to dinner and things like that. So, but no, th things are going well. I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful and fortunate for, for, for a lot of things. I have been enjoying learning and practicing the piece you wrote for me. What is your relationship with the flute? So that's a very good, interesting question. So uh, as a composer, you know, I would say probably uh, my strength would be maybe harmony and counterpoint, maybe large orchestrations, things uh, just because I've done that more, um, I, you know, throughout my career. So about eight years ago, I, I said to myself, I need to do something a little bit different to improve my, um, you know, my creativity, you know, certain timbres and and, and, and maybe it maybe be more adventurous in terms of rhythm. And so I decided to do a piece for just one instrument. And I chose the flute because I didn't particularly like the flute. <laughs> um, now, now I love the flute, so, so that, that's a good thing. <laughs> and so, um, I, I, so I wrote a piece for my friend Kane Thompson Ridus, uh, a brilliant flute player, uh, you know, based in Detroit. Um, and the piece is called On a Poem by Miho no Naka, Harvard Square. Um, based on a poem by my uh, friend and colleague, uh, poet Miho Nonaka. And, and so that piece, I was forced to, you know, learn a lot about the flute and write for a solo instrument and, and, and think creatively in different ways. And that was such a remarkable experience. I literally love the flute. And that piece is so funny. That's my most performed piece uh, now. Uh, it's performed all the time. Uh, uh, and I really enjoy the piece, but it, but it forced me to, again, to expand my timbral palette, expand my rhythmic palette, and and think in, in ways that I never really thought about a, as a composer. So, uh, so because of the flute, that piece, those I ideals, you know, you know, compositional, uh, you know, um, ideals translated into other pieces too uh, of mine. So, you know, that's my relationship with the flute. And, and uh, again, it's, I, 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 I love it. I didn't think I would love writing for the flute, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> what are the enjoyable and unique things when you write for the flute? Wow, it's easy. Color, color, color. Uh, so many, <laughs> so many colors you can, you can, you can, you can produce uh, uh, with the flute and even um, depending on you know the range of the flute, the low, middle, or high range, even those are different colors. And not, not, and I'm not even talking about extended techniques and and different techniques you can do as 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 flute uh, as as a flute player. Also, the instrument is uh, very agile. Um, um, it can do wide leaves, play really quickly, um, but also it can play very you know. Um, you know, produce a very, you know, serene and beautiful uh, 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 sound, um, too. Yeah, so, I mean, it's, it's an instrument um, that can do a, a, a lot. A lot. Uh, and like I, like I said, said, just color. Yeah. We talked about incorporating music and visual art when we first discussed this commission. Mm -hmm. What inspired you to uh, choose this specific painting by Tanner? Um, several years ago, um, I came across some paintings by uh, Henry Osawa Tanner, and I 
found them to be just, just, just beautiful. Uh, the Thankful Poor, what drew me to that painting in particular, um, the idea of light um, and, and the idea of uh, this, 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 this multi-generational uh, conversation, um, you know, it may be imparting wisdom, I don't know, or, or asking questions uh, um, um, in a conversation. Yeah, and then it's just a beautiful image. Uh, uh, and so uh, for me as an artist, as a composer, I was like, wow, I have a lot to work with. I have the idea of light. What does that mean for a solo flute? What does it mean to be in conversation with a solo flute? And, and if you as, you, as you engage this piece, you know, listeners, hopefully you can kind of see the light aspect of it, you know, or, and, and the conversational aspect of it that I got from this painting. Yeah, years ago, I went to a museum in Cincinnati, and then there was a work by Tanner. And then it was before I knew about Tanner, uh, and it was before this commission. And then I was thinking, wow, this painter really, his brush stroke really expresses the human emotion. And I was struck by the beauty of the right. painting. Yeah, uh, just curious, why were you in Cincinnati? Because I, oh, I, 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 I went to school in Cincinnati, so I, I, and I lived there for five years. So <laughs> I'm not interviewing you, but I think it'd be interesting. Yeah. Oh, I was there for an audition years ago. <laughs> uh, uh, oh, oh, okay, okay, yeah. okay. Just, it, it, it's, it's a great, it's a great town. Uh, I agree, and also I wanted to do uh, a a black painter too. Um, mm-hmm. uh, and I'm just going to be honest, and 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 I found his work just just, just quite um, beautiful. How much are you trying to capture and express from the painting, and how did your imagination work? When you look at a painting, um, it's about the meaning that that you can get from the painting, right? Um, and the beautiful thing about painting, especially uh, uh, his work, is so, you know so many people can get different things from, from from looking at it. As I mentioned earlier, I saw you know light, you know. Um, which to me, um, you know, the concept of light with sound, uh, you know, and creating that idea um, is, is a very abstract thing, but, I, but that was a motivation for this piece. And, um, you know, the, the idea of, of, of creating dialogue and, 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 and conversation, as, as, as I mentioned before, you know, the piece is for a solo flute, so it's one player, but mm-hmm. I tried to uh, write the piece um, where the, a flout is you, you know, you, you take on multiple roles. Uh, um, which, and so that was my, you know, I guess my musical inspiration um, or my conceptual idea for, for, for this piece. I was practicing earlier and then it was very conversational. But And then, um, you know, I play one line and one line here, one line here. <laughs> it's, um, it's one voice, but um, the way it's written lower register, high register, lower register, high register, and also, you know, different melodies coming in and out and within, you know, uh, one layer and creating multiple layer, I really felt like I was having a conversation or yeah. I was in the painting, actually. Right. right. <laughs> um, I like what you said about one voice, because that was also a thing, too. Like, like yes, it's a maybe a grandfather and a grandson. I'm not sure who's in the painting. Um, but to me, I see them as one also Mm -hmm. you know uh yeah and so um that that was also um an aspect of the painting that that i that i that i received from looking at it well sean thank you so much for joining us and sharing some of your creative process it's so nice to connect with you again and i hope our viewers will join us for the live premiere of sean's new piece on a painting by henry osawa tanner the Thankful Poor, on December 5th at the American Philosophical Society in Philadelphia. Thank you so much. Thank you.